Thank you to everybody who is uh, joining us today and been so active in what we're doing. I want to just uh, talk a little bit about being in Hudson Square, Joe. It was I've had a lot of emotional uh, events in my life, and I just want to all of you. If you listen to the stories that we have presented on all of these Zoom calls, the people, um, I want you just to take the words that first off on the hostages and their families, they depend on us. We are their voice. There is an inhumanity uh, that is going on that um, we have to talk to everybody. No. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, the world knows and knows their names and that we're telling and we're talking to Congress, we're talking to representatives, that we are across every single day putting up on our social media that the word to bring our families home now. Uh, I sat in a room. There was over 20 families sitting around a table. At that very moment, Hamas had sent a video of three hostages. Now, I want you to just imagine looking into those eyes of each one of those family members as every one of them wanted to look on their phones and every one of them did not want to look on their phones. The anguish, the inhumanity that is being continued by Hamas against our family members. So please post, talk, write. Do not allow the world to forget anything about these family members that are our family members, and we have to bring them home now. Our team here in Israel has been working tirelessly from day one on October 7th, and you've had that stories and you've seen the work and heard from the people. I will tell you that as I travel and I get to meet with every kibbutz and moshav, as we're working now to bring our people back home as we rebuild together. This is the reality. The reality is, is that most of the communities want to come back home. They're facing the fears about security. And the IDF will take care of that. There's this use of the mentality of trust about from what happened and what could happen. But there's a feeling because the IDF is them. They are the Israel Defense Forces, and they're going to take care of that. The issues that we have is that we have to bring them home and not ever forget their circle of pain. That we cannot do. But I know that Betsy Fisher and the, Israel, and the Gaza Envelope Task Force and the Israel Envelope Task Force is meeting on Tuesday and is going to be more active and be out there and talking to everybody because we are meeting with seven communities from Shara Negev, seven communities from Eshkol, and by the end of February, and you can hear this and put this down, by the end of February, 20,000 people from the Israel envelope are going to be back in their homes. We're going to work with them to take care of safe homes and safe houses next to their homes. We're going to work and take care of their communities and bring them that moment of reveal that says we're starting anew. We're going to be with them then, and we're going to be with them as we're working on every aspect of what tomorrow and the issues that tomorrow will be because we have been there for over 20 years. And we're going to bring back the Israel envelope to a place which is going to be the envy of Israel. We also had the opportunity to meet with Kuma, the government agency that is working together with the people and together with us as they look to us to be part of their strategic planning arm. Because it wasn't about projects. They know that from us, it's a matter of building back for tomorrow and having a strategy that is going to lead for the communities for tomorrow. And we're going to be presenting them, those 12, 15 communities that we're working with in the next months ahead, and our over 1,000 people that have signed up for our volunteer trips. This one, starting the next week, is going to start working in one of the kibbutzes, helping to rebuild their kibbutz and community. We just had a meeting in the room that I'm here in Israel with groups of people from Balkani Institute, from Hashomer, from the Jewish Agency, from KPMG and others, 
talking about farmers, just to give you an example. The farmers are having a situation in which the uh, tanks that are rolling onto their properties are literally destroying their lands that may take a year or two to be able to bring up the soil to a point where they're going to be able to grow crops for tomorrow. We have to look at working together with all of the agencies that are working in farms to make sure that the technology that is available is going to be there, that it's going to take them to advance because I know that all of us go to the grocery store and we don't understand where a tomato comes from or where grapes come from. But Israel, the Zionist dream was to be able to grow on our soil. And the reality is the security of our Zionist dream is that the farmland has to be part of a strategic planning for today and for tomorrow. We're looking and working with them on loans, but we're also working with the Hashomer bringing over 130,000 volunteers that are coming to farmers. Thousands of farmers that literally would lose everything if it wasn't for us, the volunteers coming from America and the volunteers that are coming throughout Israel. So just imagine for $20,000, it costs us to bring buses to one farm for one year. So when you're making your contributions, and you're asking people, understand that a farmer, that our Zionist dream depends on what you, what us, what we are together going to do. I know that our campaign has already, on a national basis, gone almost to $100 million. Almost $50 million of that is just in our resilience campaign and our build together part. And we haven't even started our planning and our real work in the North. We've utilized a lot of funds to taking care of evacuees. We've provided shelters and we've worked with the government of Israel on what we can, but there is all the evacuation going on and then there's tomorrow. And we're working now in building a reimagining campaign for the Northern part of Israel. So you, I can guarantee for everybody that's coming here on our volunteer trips, that you come here to Israel, you will see how we are touching every part of the rebuilding, how we're touching every part of people's lives, what you're hearing from people with disabilities, from people from the farmers out in the field. We are part of it. That's the Jewish National Fund story yesterday. It's the Jewish National Fund story today. And I'm telling you, they're looking at our eyes. And I am so proud to represent all of you because they look at us. And they say to me constantly, thank you, thank you. But that thank you isn't for Russell Robinson. And it's not for Jewish National Fund USA. It's each and every one of you because you're doing and you've got to continue asking. Asking and getting people to be part of this greatest movement and our greatest moment of our Zionist dream. Thank you very much.